We are going to now look at section 2.2, which is the limit of a function. This will introduce how to find the limit of a function graphically, and then next we'll look at how to find the limit algebraically. So, if I were to just take, I'll start with simple function, y equals x squared, and if I were to say, okay, graphically, we know the graph of x squared is a parabola, and if I asked you, what's the limit of this function as, I, as x approaches 1? So again, the limit of this function as x approaches 1. So here's 1. So from the right side, if I start up here on the right side, as I get closer and closer and closer, so as x approaches 1 would be coming down the graph, what is my y value? On the left side, if I did this, start over here, as I get, oops, as I get closer and closer to 1, what am I, what is the y value? So we all know that the y value of this point is 1, 1. So both from the right and from the left, as x approaches 1, the function equals 1. So the notation for that that I'm going to show you is the limit as x arrow 1, that means as x approaches 1, of the function, what's the function? x squared. What's the answer? 1. Okay, now again, the answer is like that because from both the left side and the right side, that's what the y value is approaching. If I do another simple, simple function, y equals 2x plus 3. So we can all draw this. 2x plus 3, start at 3. My slope is 2, so I go up 2 over 1, and there I am. Okay. Um, so now, if I ask you, what's the limit of this function as x approach is 0 of 2x plus 3? So if I look from the right side, I would have to start above here, and I would be getting closer and closer and closer. From the left side, from the left, start down here, be getting closer and closer and closer. So both of them, as I get closer to 0, what is the y value getting closer to? My answer is 3. So these are pretty simple. You're saying to me, well, it's just the y value. And that's the case if the function is defined. If the function is just a continuous function like that, the limit as I approach a value will just be the y value. Now, let me just go over notation. So in general, the limit of a function, the limit of some function f of x as x approaches a, a is what I'm getting closer to, the x value I'm getting closer to, let's say equals l. That's my answer, the value that it equals. Okay. So now this exists if the left limit equals the right limit, meaning if the limit as x approaches a from the left, we put a little minus sign of f of x, has to equal the limit as x approaches a from the right of f of x. If these are both equal to L, then the answer is L. All this is saying is the left side and the right side has to be approaching the same thing. So in your head, maybe you're thinking the, the graph cannot jump. Okay, so now we're going to look at a piecewise graph that I already have drawn for you to get the idea of when would it not exist and what are some other scenarios for this. So if I look at this graph here, I already have it drawn for you. Take a second. So it's x plus 1, 2, negative x, 0, x minus 4. You can pause it and look at this. This is the graph of that piecewise function. The first one I want to look at the limit as x approaches 2, negative 2. Okay, so negative 2 is over here. Now the graph is only to the right of this, so I only have to worry about from the right because there's nothing to the left of it. So if I look on the graph, as I get closer and closer, I'd be coming down this line segment. What am I getting closer and closer to? Negative 1. So the answer to A, the limit as x approaches negative 2 of my function is negative 1. Even though it's not defined, it doesn't have to be defined, it's just what am I approaching? So as x gets closer to negative 2, what's the y value getting closer to? It's getting closer to negative 1, even though it's not defined there. It doesn't have to be. A limit can be a whole. It can be an asymptote, or it can actually be where the function is defined. The next one, the limit as x approaches 0. 
of my function. You can pause this to try to figure it out yourself first. So at zero, if I look from the left side, from the left side, I would actually be coming up this blue line again. My answer would be one. So from the left, the limit's one. From the right side, the limit's actually zero because there's a break there. So here is a problem where the answer would not exist. Again, because the left limit and the right limit are not the same. Okay, the next one is as um, x approaches 2. So from 2, from the left side, I'm looking on the graph, bringing my pencil down. From the left side, I'm coming down to the point like that, which would be negative 2. From the right side, now I'd be coming here, and, I, and they're both approaching the same thing. They connect, you can think about it. So the answer is negative 2. So the limit as x approaches 2 of the function is negative 2. And then the last one is 4. So 4 is over here. Again, there is no graph to the right, so I only have to worry about from the left. So the limit as I approach it from the left, I'm coming closer and closer to, would be 0. So the last answer is 0. The limit as x approaches 4 is 0 and I only can look at it from the left side. So I'm going to say this a couple times, but so far we've looked at a limit of a continuous function, just meaning there's no breaks or holes, and it's just going to be equal to the y value. Now I've looked at a function that has a jump and a hole. Okay, so if I jump, like at zero, there's no answer. Okay, but at two, the limit exists, even though there's a hole, because both sides are approaching the same y value. Now we're going to look at using the graphs. This is all going to be done graphically. Find the limits. So I have a little note on the side. Here's where you must know all your graphs. Okay, so here's where just a quick sketch is all we need to look at. Okay, so the first one's just a line again. So I can do quick sketch up one, up two, over one, and draw the line. And I want the limit as x approaches three. So 3 would be over here, and my point would be way up here. Okay, so I'm just looking at as x approaches 3, what would the value be? And you might be thinking, well, since this is just a line, it's just going to be the y value. And what is the y value? Well, 2 times 3 is 6, plus 1 is 7. Again, you can do the entire graph to see that, but because it's just a continuous line, the limit will just actually be equal to the y value. The next one's your sine graph. So draw a quick sketch, pi, pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 0 starts here, 1, negative 1, negative 1, 0. There I have sine. So the limit of sine as I approach 0, again I can show it, as I come from the left side would be the gray coming closer and closer to 0. The right side would be from the right, and they're both approaching the same value, which is 0. It's hard to see. So my answer is 0. Again, continuous function, just the y value. Next one, limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over x. So quickly sketch 1 over x. I have a branch here, I have a branch here, and I have my two asymptotes at 0 and 0. So the limit at 0, now if you look at from the left side, is going to be from the left, I'm going to actually, would be this, down, 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 down. So from the left, the limit is negative infinity. So 0 from the left, the answer would be negative infinity. Now from the right, guys, I'm getting closer and closer to 0. Graph is going up, so it would be positive infinity. So the limit as x approaches 0 from the right is positive infinity. So therefore, the limit of this problem does not exist. Why not? Because the left side and the right side are not approaching the same thing. Now the sec that part D is asking the same problem, the limit of 1 over x as x goes to infinity. So now all I care about is as x It's getting bigger and bigger, so I'd be in the red now. As x gets bigger and bigger and bigger, what's the graph approaching? Closer and closer and closer to? Uh, we know that this is 0. This is, I think, what you thought about a limit where it's an asymptote. And I only have to worry about 
one side because it's positive infinity. I can't approach positive infinity from the left and the right. Next one is 1 over x squared. We might not be as familiar with this graph. It's going to come up a lot, so I'll graph it quickly. Um, and then we will just have it. So 1 over x squared, actually, 0 are still my asymptotes. x can't be 0, y will never be 0. But both curves are above the x-axis, so it looks like that. So now, as I approach 0 from the left, from the left, the graph is going up, up, up. From the right, it's also getting greater and greater and greater. So therefore, this limit would actually be infinity because both sides are increasing towards infinity. Next one is the limit as x approaches 1 of x minus 1 over x minus 1. Now, this x minus 1 over x minus 1 really just becomes what? We all know. They cancel, and it just becomes 1. So this graph is actually just the horizontal line 1, except at 1, it wouldn't be defined, so it would have a hole there. What you remember from last year, when a factor cancels, what happens? There's a hole in the graph. So here's my graph. As I approach 1 from both the right and the left, if I look from the left, I approach 1. From the right, I approach 1. I would be getting closer and closer to 1. So my answer is 1, even though it's a hole. It does not have to be defined. Both sides just have to be coming to the same point, even if the point is not defined. Next one is natural log of x. So if I just have my quick sketch of natural log of x, I know that it crosses at the x um, axis, and I know that it increases left to right. There it is. So the limit as x approaches 0 would be go down, 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 down. So it would be negative infinity. I do not have to worry about from the left since there's no graph to the left. Next one is e to the x. So again, quick sketch of e to the x. I know it crosses at 1, and I know it increases. So the limit as x approaches negative infinity meaning getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller to the left. What's the graph, graph approaching? Well, zero. So my answer is, whoops, sorry guys. So my answer is zero. Next, I have 1 over x plus 2 as x approaches negative 2. So I can do a quick sketch of that rational graph. I know that I have an asymptote at negative 2, and I have a horizontal asymptote at zero. And my curves are going to be here and here since it's positive. And now if I want the limit as I approach negative 2, I have to look at left and right. From the left side, it would be going down. From the right side, it would be going up. So my answer is does not exist because the left limit would not equal the right limit. Next one, natural log of x again, but I'm looking at it from different x value. So natural log of x crosses at... 1, 0. There it is. And I'm looking at the limit as x approaches 0 from the right. From the right side, from the right as x approaches 0 would still be negative infinity. It really only has a limit from the right side. So that's no different than the limit as x approaches 0 because there's no graph to the left of 0. All right, so vertical asymptotes and infinite limit. So we've kind of already said, but I want to formally write this. If, if the limit as x approaches some value a of the function is equal to infinity or negative infinity, then what is true? Then I have a vertical asymptote at x equals a then x equals a is a vertical asymptote. If the graph is approaching infinity or negative infinity. As I get closer and closer and closer, then I must have a vertical asymptote. Okay. So just to put this together, the limit of a function, so just to recap, the limit of a function can be an asymptote. It can actually be the value of a vertical asymptote. It can be a hole in the graph. It could be the y value of the hole or it can actually be the defined point if the graph is continuous. The limit does not exist at a jump in a graph y because 
the left limit does not equal the right limit when this happens. Does not equal the right limit. That's why I would not have a limit existing when you have a jump. Okay. Next, it is what the function's approaching as you get closer and closer to the x value. It's not always what the y value is. It's what I'm getting closer and closer to. That's why it doesn't matter if there's actually a hole or an asymptote. And then last, I, I've already said this, sometimes it is defined for that x value, and sometimes it's not defined, which means sometimes it's an open circle or an asymptote.